Guys, I've got somebody that is making some moves in the real estate industry. Um, I've seen her in action and I'm super excited because today I get to interview Stephanie Zinn. High five, Stephanie. Hey, high five. It's quarantine time. <laughs> Yep, new way to do everything. <laughs> uh, absolutely. So, quick introduction, Stephanie. I know of you well because a week ago I had the privilege, and it was a privilege, by the way, to be on a um, Zoom interview with you. And um, this is with uh, Tony Fletcher at the Your Belinda and I'm Heels Market Center. And I was very impressed, by the way. Thank and you. I had a, a pleasure, pleasure, absolutely. And I, had, I did have a question for you and you were, you're precise and because you know what leadership is all about. You have to be very fluid and flexible and you, you know, there is lots of transitions in life and I know you've been in many positions of leadership because I, I heard your pitch, I heard your story. Um, it's very impressive. You're a local of Southern California, of Palm Desert, I think like two or three generations, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, third gen. Well, Okay, so I, I'm, I'm not trying to sell you. I'll sell you so always. I'm just trying to tell you, Stephanie, that I know I'll be in a high impressed of you, and I'm super excited because I get to interview you. So let's get this started. Great. Um, so, Stephanie, Stephanie's in. Um, you are now, um, what, you're the chairman and you're um, heading up the Young Professionals Network of California Association, California Association of Realtors, right? Yes, yes. I'm the California Association of Realtors Young Professionals Network Forum Chair. Uh, for 2020. Uh, it didn't, it feels like hot potato. I didn't know I'd be handling, hand, hand, holding it the year of the pandemic, but it, uh, it's been an interesting year to say the least. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And I think almost for you, Stephanie, this is, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. This is something that none of us have experienced before, at least in, in my era, in my time, and for my children, of course, and for yourself. Right. And, but you've worn many hats, right? I mean, uh, how are you controlling and how are you managing this current situation? Oh, you know, it's day to day and some days I do a great job and some days I don't. Um, some days, you know, we, we, some days the house looks like this and some days it doesn't look like this. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's just, you, you got to just kind of go with the flow right now. I feel like all of us are to the point where a lot of, a lot of my friends in the business are really busy. Um, a lot of, uh, some of them are not so busy. Some people aren't not having a great year. Most people okay. I know are having banner years, but the bottom line is regardless of where your business is at, we're all learning how to walk again. You know, we're learning how to do showings again. We're learning how to do buyer <laughs> appointments again. We're like, and so I feel like we're all like baby deer with like super tired legs. <laughs> mm. And some days it's just the best you can do to get your hair pulled back to the ponytail or put a baseball cap on and get out there and do what you got to do and get back and retreat a little bit just so you can take the time you need. Cause I, I think that's been, you know, been the biggest, uh, the biggest drive this year. And it was already our push was to talk about mental health. Um, and, and really in the real estate industry, this business can be so isolating because our friends are our competition. Um, I know agents who have passed away from cancer and no one in the world knew that they were even sick because they didn't want their business to be hindered while they were going through the process mm -hmm. and feared that if anybody heard that they were sick or going through chemo, that they wouldn't work with them. And so this tends to be a business where we really isolate ourselves and we've wanted to make there a safe space for us to come and talk about those days where we're just not okay. <laughs> we're in, and everybody's allowed to have those. You know, I, I actually made a post the other day on social media and if you dig into my Facebook page, you'll find it and Instagram, you'll find it. And it was a picture that I had just gotten some new uh, magnetic lashes that I was very excited about. But really that earlier that day, a group of my, a group of my peers that I was on a chat with were not okay. And I literally in the middle of, Target had to pull a chair off of a display to sit down so that I could respond to this person properly. Oh, and nice. it was one of those moments where the day looked on, if you looked at my Instagram, it looked like it was all about fluffy lashes and, you know, and ring lights and, and all that fun stuff. But in all and reality, we, yeah, in all reality, we were dealing with pain and despair and somebody who was overwhelmed and didn't know what to do. And I think we're all kind of feeling that way right now. We just have to give ourselves the space to, to do that so you know to, to go through those feelings and those emotions right, right? like i mean i i i have a, a small dog at home and so i don't have children but to my friends that have kids that are doing homeschooling right now i don't even know how you're doing anything else you know 
Yes, let alone. We, well, we, we have five children. My 20 year old, he's living in Newport Beach. He's moved out. My, my wife is just all day long. I just, I don't watch her. It's so sad. Yeah. Me, she's cleaning up all the time. She's trying to school, homeschool two children. I, my 11 year old, my five year old. She's taking care of a two year old who's just whining because he wants to go out and do things. Yeah. But, yeah, he's so, they're all torn between this kind of isolation. So you're right. It's, it is a very emotional time. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's nice that we have somebody like yourself that is in leadership that understands that a, a, an agent is almost like a solo bandit. They, yeah. They're protected of their territory. They've got to protect their territory. That's their business. That's what pays their bills. Um, and you being the chair and heading up the young professional network, of especially, I want to say like Orange County, even like South LA, because it's, it all kind of meshes into each other, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have a lot of heads to wear. And how, how well, are you doing that? Are, are, you, are you still doing production? Yeah, so I mean, I am very, very lucky that I, while I'm the chair of our state network, we have local associations. We have a network at, at, at almost every local association in California. Okay. And, and not every local, but we're working on that. <laughs> and we're growing all the time. Um, it, but the goal and the goal with the Young Professionals Network is to create that safe place, safe place for young professionals to come and find, you know, like-minded people to sort of talk to and share ideas with um, and create that community. And so I'm very lucky that we have these very strong leaders and outreach is my number one thing. Again, I'm very high touch. Technology is important, but you have to use it to get to on a, onto a one-on-one -on -one basis with somebody. And so, you know, those that outreach program where we're reaching out to those chairs across the state and saying, what can we do to help you? Um, that piece is important. My advisory board members, like you have to have a tribe, you have to have that team. Right. And Absolutely. what I have found this year is I, there were a couple of times where I was putting out messages in a group text and I went from one platform to another and I was getting nothing. And I, I, I actually opened up the emoji screen and almost clicked the cricket emoji. And I was like, you know what? No, that's not leadership. You got to look within yourself. What are you, what are you not giving them? Like, what is, what are they not getting right now that you're not getting the response back? And I, I had a conversation with my vice chair. She was just as frustrated. And we, I said, stop what we're doing. We need to reach out to every single one of them this weekend. So no more pushes for anything else that we need from them until we find out what's going on with each one of them. Wow. And after that Fantastic. phone call, I really had to ask for a couple favors because I was getting ready to put a video together and needed them all to participate in it. And I got the best, easiest participation I received all year long after I checked in and spent probably 45 minutes on the phone with each one of them, just checking in. How are you? And what I found is that they're all overwhelmed. They're all totally exhausted right, right, and right. they all feel like nobody really cares. Like no, everybody's still asking for all the same amount of stuff, but we just got to do it a different way and just keep doing it and keep going and keep going. And nobody's saying like, whoa, are you okay? <laughs> and that's the, that's the question is, are you okay? You know, giving somebody the opportunity to validate themselves. There is a lot of uncertainty right now in our environment and across the world it is. So I'm not just being sympathetic for our network and our, our realtor association, but I'm feeling sorry for the yeah. world. There's a lot of uncertainty. It's almost like a reverse psychology that you have to do, right, Stephanie? Because yeah. You, you, and please don't, don't get, please take this in, in a positive way. You really have to be on peak performance all the time. You really can't show yeah. a bad side or a negative side because uh, you know, people look up to you for guidance, they look for, for support, direction. So the minute you kind of go in, in right. a different direction, a negative direction, you know, people get switched over that immediately. So you, yeah. no matter what, if you're always having to be the, the, the big smiley face, the happy person, Life is good, life yeah. is amazing, to lift everybody else but endorse right. them because they're also being down right now. Well, and I think what, for, for personally, what I learned this year was that I have given away way too much of myself. And that I, I when I give, when I talk and, and coach my agents in, in the real estate business, and we talk about matching commitment levels and matching um, energy levels, like I want to mm. make sure that if you don't want, if you don't want to buy a house tomorrow, like you're not about to be homeless, you probably don't want to hear from me every time I see the right house for you, right? But right. if you're going to be homeless, then you want me to call you every time. Otherwise, maybe it's once a week, maybe it's once every 30 days. I just, I want to match that energy level. And we got to make sure that we're doing that with one another too. Um, and we got to make sure that we're doing that that when we give out energy to places that we are able to get as much back. And the, the other, the big thing that I've mm -hmm. learned, I think, is that no one takes care of me as good as me and no one ever will. Wow. And that's okay. Like, no, I don't need to look for anyone else to do that. I just need to reserve enough of me to be able 
to give what I need to give back to myself. So I think all of us have kind of learned that this year that maybe we'd overextended ourselves and had some things in place to make that work. And we just got to be careful not to walk that line so closely, you know, that we reserve enough of ourselves to be able to take care because we've got to be on point as agents, as managers, as leaders, whatever it is, we've got to be on point. And, and, you know, I was talking to a friend uh, just recently, I've made some, some business changes and they were asking me about my, my business and when I was like going to ramp it up. And I said, I just, I need a second. Like I know the level uh, that I expect myself to take care mm. of my clients and I got to make sure I'm ready to do that. I got to make sure that I'm okay with me and I need just a minute to replenish after the last little thing that I did. And I took that minute just so that I would have that. And I think we we're all kind of learning that this year to stop and take that time that we need to just recharge you know I, I think well, we've all kind of depleted ourselves a yeah, bit absolutely. and, and, and said is a mindset game it's a mindset yeah. game. yeah you're constantly playing this game with yourself and with your clients and with your family and with your business you, you're juggling all the time you you got this calendar you got the schedule to just live by you got leads coming in and just follow up and follow through and i mean you're literally you're kind of your own empire in a sense on on yeah. wheels so stephanie for you um you've been in many leadership roles uh you're also part of the 30 under 30, right? When you're part of it, didn't you become uh, acknowledged for a top producer under 30? No, I'm not being well, age, I'm just saying. No, no, no. I, I, I'm happy to share my age. Actually, I'm, I'm very proud of this, that I am 40, I'm 41. I will turn 42 next year. Yeah. Are and so, the, okay, yeah. I'm, and so, so I've been in, I've been a part and I'll explain it because it okay. is a little interesting. I, I, when I, when I accepted the role of YP and chair, I was, I turned 40, 41 that day. And I said to everybody in the room that day that I never expected that I would be doing this at this age because I've been involved with YPN since I was in my early thirties. However, I am only in my second year at CAR. And so, you know, I'm still new to that piece of it. And YPN has really helped me through that. Just like YPN helped me in my business back when I was in my early thirties. And so for me to be able at this point to give back, to be able to give back Mm -hmm. to the, the network given in the industry given so much to me has been such an honor this year um, yeah. unfortunately last year we did lose one of our young YPNers who I expected to be sitting to suicide um, I expected to be our sitting shame. in this chair and so so yeah and so that had been our push this year but again yeah. I like I, I don't I'm really glad that there wasn't a, and I don't want to say a newbie but that there wasn't somebody who was just cutting their teeth in this position this year. I'm really glad because this year wasn't for the light of heart. You know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't for a rookie. And I'm really glad that we were able, my, our network ended up being larger and stronger and more deeply connected by the end of the year. And I really feel like that had a lot to do with a little bit of my old school leadership techniques. And so I I have been recognized, but it was a little while ago. Uh, Awesome. Well, I apologize. Honestly, I thought, well, you, you 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 look very young. So let me just. Let me, let me, I hey, I'll take so, it all day long, uh, and I actually do enjoy a little bit of the shock factor yeah, that I get. I, 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 I let you buy them, like you know, I recognize the thing, and they're like, wow, she, she's done so much in such a uh, short amount of time. But you really have, because you've been in real estate for eighteen years. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, Stephanie, what, what I do like though is, um, and the same leadership because I've been in leadership, and I've also run multiple teams, and you know, I, uh, my leader is Tony Fletcher. So I've been with him yeah. for years now, and I've, I, even though I don't live near your Belinda, um, I've always left my license with him because he's the most dependable, most valuable leader that I know. Um, and that's why mm-hmm. I'm actually interviewing today because Tony said, you've got to interview this day, uh, Stephanie Zinn. I'm like, hold on, <laughs> Stephanie Zinn. Okay, I, I, so I, I'm really glad I'm doing it. Where I'm going with this is, being a leadership for you, Stephanie, you're almost, you're almost like you're staying on giant shoulders, right? with this big organization called the California Association of Realty, yeah. which is by far right next to New York. I mean, we're the two big players on the continent of America, at least in North America, that is. Right. Um, oh, our association's far bigger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, being with California, I know it's just as, as bad as the East Coast of New York. But you, you're, you're dealing with some really big people um, and responsibilities, yeah. decision-making. So you have to be really precise. There's no dilly-dallying with your 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 mentorship and your leadership. No. So Stephanie, how many, um, how many uh, agents right now are in the YPN, the Young uh, Professionals Network? And the Young Professionals Network, we've expanded our reach from 3,500 to 4,500 this year. Um, nice. we, we, uh, through, and, and most of that is done through social media. I will say that a lot of what we do is really by word of mouth. And again, our outreach program is the most important thing that we mm-hmm. do. So it's really that individual touch. 
but we do get a lot of activity. We have an average of 17 posts a week on our social media, just on our Facebook forum alone. That doesn't even include Instagram. Um, wow. But, you know, our, our network is sharing ideas. They're asking questions. They're looking for referrals amongst one another. Um, they're sharing best practices. It's just mm. an amazing outlet for a young realtor or anybody who's really young in the business. It's not just young. It's it's young in the business and it needs that place to go to find that connection. Yeah, right. um, that's yeah. really what, what it's all about. But yeah, it's uh, our reach right now is just over 4,500. Well people. done. Congratulations. Yeah. When I was in my 30s, I uh, went to the YPN and I had a blast. I mean, they, they would have these great events. And I mean, the one yeah. event I went to with YPN was they rented a yacht in Newport Harbor. Yep. I was like, oh, this is awesome. And of course I went. Um, right. Sammy, uh, so for leadership, for you being in, uh, in leadership, is it an annual leadership role or is it uh, uh, two years, four years? How does that work when it comes to your, your role in the position that you're in? This particular position with CARYPN is a one-year term. Um, it's a one-year commitment. So generally at the end of the year, the last event that I would normally do would be um, our October forum. Um, however, in true COVID style, we're doing two additional events. We're having someone to keep, come speak on the um, fair housing history in California. Very nice. And then we're also having a discussion on, um, it's, good, we're, it's called Be Better, Do Better. And it's just about what we can do within our associations to be better um, and to nice. have a more diverse and inc uh, inclusive environment. And really more about creating an anti-discriminatory environment and just equipping our YPNers with the tools they're going to need to navigate those kind of conversations because they're not easy and that's that right happen. absolutely especially when it comes to housing yes I mean it's everyone needs a roof over their head so yeah yeah, yeah. And, and, and and we know the safety this is such a big problem right you know from, from even from the homeless to the affordability of a home a roof over your head or the yeah. homeless I mean that's impossible for them not impossible it's just we have to help to support and get them into housing but then those that are single moms I'm a big advocate of single mothers because I was brought up by a single mother I'm a big advocate of orphanages. So uh, uh, to me, they all need help. They all need guidance and support. And, uh, you know, it, it takes so much effort and, and financing. There's a yeah. cost to everything, Stephanie. Uh, running the YPN isn't free. You know, your, right. your time, your, your, your intelligence, your brain power, your, your, um, your skills in understanding what I said. Because a lot of young, young mm -hmm. uh, ages are looking to you for the answers. They're, they're, right. they're not going to invent them because they, they don't make a mistake because that's their livelihood. So literally at the end of the year, right. you're responsible for 4,500 people. <laughs> not really, but you know, <laughs> that's kind of, you, you, you know, at that Well, round. it is, I mean, yeah, this year we've, I think we've all kind of looked to one another to get each other through the rough days. So it has been, it's been, I have taken some interesting, interesting phone calls this year. Um, some of them have been during times where I was dealing with my own personal crises and it's been interesting to be able to get out of my own head. And that's, that's one thing I shared with the agents in my office when it was happening was if you, I was hearing some people were lonely, feeling really camped up at home and couldn't get out. And I right. said, just call somebody, check in, you check in on somebody. When you help someone else, it helps you get out of your own head and helps you get out of your own situation, take a little vacation from whatever you got going on with you and go check in on somebody else and make sure they're okay. You know, that's and I think that's kind advice. of the message, right? That's right. I think if we all did that, wouldn't it be yeah. a better place? Cause it's, 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 you know, it's called confinement for a reason. We're confined, but ultimately... We've got these amazing tools that we can use to get some reach. Stephanie, uh, I want to kind of end it here. Exactly. I wanna, uh, no, absolutely. I want to end it here because um, uh, I want to, if you, I want one takeaway from you, please, as we go into the new year for you, because this is, this show is all about you, Stephanie. And what's the one thing that you're looking forward to in the coming year? Because we're almost at the end of this year in the coming year. Um, what is one thing that you want to accomplish? And then what can you leave for us to take away? Um, it'll bit of advice or something that you feel like can help us through this time? Ah, well, I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to be held highly accountable by doing this, but I am studying for my broker's license right now. And I have mm -hmm. not been able to dedicate during the pandemic. I've had not a single day off. Um, I even became unemployed at one point and I have not had a single day off. Um, it is, uh, it's been very, very busy. And so I am taking the next three weeks to have a vacation. And that vacation is actually going to include me being camped up partial of the time at the beach and part of the time, uh, most of the time, I will be studying for my broker's license. So that is my goal by the end of the year. If you're looking Master. for one big goal, I think that's it. And my reason for that, 
was after attend. I just finished attending Woman Up, um, which was September 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of this okay. month. Um, and then I attended last year. When I attended last year, I was inspired to get my broker's license. And this year, you know, when, when I was, um, when I, I left a brokerage that I was with and I, I, when I was in the search for the new brokerage, I realized at that point, I really should have my own broker's license just because I should have it. Yeah, it, absolutely. It, it took me 10 years in the business to get my real estate license. And now it's taken me 20 something years in the business to get my broker's license. So if I could give anybody else some advice, like don't take that long. It's not necessary. There's but, no, I used to say I didn't need it. And that's not true. You need it. Go get it. You deserve it. You know what I mean? And, and so that I think is a big one for me. And, and, and I think if I was going to set some, like, what is, what am I looking forward to moving forward? Um, it's, it's never going back to the way it was. Like, I'm really glad that is over and that we don't have wow. to do that anymore. <laughs> it's painful to learn the new way and it's been tiring. And I'm but. looking forward to that becoming a little more of a well-oiled machine for us, you know, for everybody mm. to just not be so exhausted by the day-to-day -day tasks that we have to do because our brains are so busy expanding from all the new things that we're learning, you know? So yeah. I think I'm just looking forward to settling in. Um, but again, I think maybe that's something coming from somebody in their 40s. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That, well, I, I, think, I, think, I think elevating ourselves and, and evolution is a very important thing because yeah, it just makes, yeah. us, it makes us better people. I, I, I consider myself, I'm always grooming, my, grooming myself for excellence is what I look at. Yeah. And, and in yeah. order you have to, you have to always be at the forefront because if you're not, I mean, you look back a year later, you're like, man, I lost out on that opportunity or whatever that may be. I didn't make that decision to get my broker's license. Stephanie, what's the one thing right. that you can leave for our audience that, that you feel would help us during this time? You know, if, if I was going to, if I would give you one piece of advice, I want to, I'm going to front it by saying it's not just something that's like a do good, feel good thing. It's really something that in my own personal experience has given back to me and has helped me to accomplish my goals. It's reaching out to my people. Okay. It is just checking in on them. Call, and it's it's lead follow up, you know what I mean. But it's it's you if you really do it with with some emotion behind it and with some care behind it, it just becomes this wonderful thing that you're not just checking on clients, but you're checking on your colleagues, you're checking on your coworkers, you're checking on your friends, you're checking on family, and that leads to your business, right? And so, like, wow. if I could go back to one thing, it's going to be my little handwritten notes, and it's going to be my phone calls, and sometimes Zoom meetings, like maybe Zoom coffee. Um, I know a lot of my friends right now who are in the business are sending their clients a bottle of wine and they'll have a bottle of wine and they'll celebrate something <laughs> via Zoom. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's great. I did. If you can't be wow. face to face, but they want to have like a dinner, they'll send them a little dinner from their favorite restaurant and they all kind of share it around a Zoom. Oh and, my goodness. Me. You know, it's that's little crazy. things like that. We got to learn wow. some new ways to connect with one another. But I think if, if I could say anything, like find a way to connect with somebody and do it. Like don't mm -hmm. wait don't think about it. Just go connect with somebody. It, it makes you feel better. And then when you need something, you've right. got your tribe of people that you've invested time in that you can make a withdrawal from that bank. It's, it's interesting you say that, Stephanie, because I've always believed real estate is a contact sport. So I, mm -hmm. I've always been to do open houses, go door knocking and so forth. But you're right, whether it's Zoom or on Facebook or over the phone or FaceTime, that is a contact sport. So thank you. You've actually made that. You've actually clarified that for me. I appreciate that. Right. It, it, and it is, it's, it's, we just, the same thing I, I, as a manager in an office, I learned that I was asking my agents to reach out to their clients, right? I was reaching out to them saying, what do you guys need? And this was at the very beginning of the shutdown. I was finding out that they needed, you know, they had clients that needed trips to the grocery store or trips to the bank, or oh, I needed wow. a, an agent that needed a commission deposited and didn't want to leave the house. We were doing things like that for them. And we kept telling them, please reach out to your clients and let's just help the whole community. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a wonderful little ripple effect that you can create um, by oh, doing absolutely. something like that and helping somebody else and challenging them to reach out to someone else. Is there anybody else we need to check in on? Well, I, I, that's, I, that's, I mean, that, that ends up being your next lead, right? Oh, absolutely. right? Like, absolutely. We don't, it, it's just organic, yeah, but that's what it ends up being. Or even a referral. They, they yeah. love you or they for them so much that they, their mother-in-law is moving out or is selling or, and so forth. Well, I believe your ripple effect right. is going to be mightier than what we know. And I look forward to seeing what the future holds for us with Stephanie Zinn. Thank you for your time. It was awesome, Stephanie. Thank and, you. Um, I, will I will speak to you soon because I want to catch up with you in the next few months and see what you're up to, Stephanie. Love it. I love it. Sounds good. Thank you.